The Epson SD10 is a powerful tool on its own. With the built-in screen and controls, you can compare two colors just about anywhere and collect up to 100 colors in the internal memory. But we can extend the features of the SD10 by connecting it to a smartphone app available for iOS or Android. I'm using a, an iOS device here and I'm going to now connect to it with the Epson Spectrometer app. I've got my device turned on already, now I'm going to launch the app. So I've previously paired my SD10 with my phone, so right now it is looking for it and on my device I can see it's saying connect to the external device, I'm going to click yes. Now I'm connected and you can see up at the top of the iOS device I see Eric SD10, that's my device, I can see the battery level and the text is in white. When it's disconnected, the text is gray. The first thing that happens after connecting is any color that I measured since I last connected to my smartphone has now synced to the smartphone. So these are some of the last colors that I measured in. What you're looking at now is the home screen of the smartphone app. And I can scroll through some of the colors here that I've measured previously. I get an overview of the LAB values and over to the right hand side, I can see the date that they were measured. You can tap any of these to go into a more detailed screen. Here you can see lab values, LCH values, RGB and CMYK values as well, and those are related to default profiles that you've defined in the settings of the smartphone app. Down at the bottom here, I have the time and date that the measurement was taken, what mode it was taken in, and even the serial number of the device that was used, in case you're using multiple devices. One thing the app really adds to the experience of using the SD10 is putting color in context. You've captured a bunch of colors at your customer's location and you need to keep it organized. And here I can add notes and add something about this color to put it in context and help me remember what it was for later. I can also tag each color with a photo of what it is that I measured to help me remember later. And if you allow it, it'll tag location information as well. So when you're reviewing color and you see where you were when you measured it, you can say, oh yeah, I was at customer ABC. Up top here, we have a few more tabs. There's similar colors which will compare the measured color to some of the built-in Pantone libraries that come free with the app. So I can see here this color is 2.70 Delta E away from Pantone 154C. It's a great tool if you have to work within Pantone specifications, so you can figure out what's the closest Pantone color for this measured color so I can use it in my project elsewhere. Now a really powerful tool using the SD10 with the smartphone app is the graph. Here I see a color space chart and I have my lab values, but you can see down here I have the V7000 profile loaded. This is just an example. You can load whatever ICC profile you want so long as it's a CMYK or RGB profile. And it's saying here that it's out of gamut. That's okay, not every color out there is within gamut of every printer. But the great thing is, is you can set expectations with your customer by showing them just how far out of gamut it is. This is a powerful tool to set expectations with your customer on what you can deliver on. And also, as you're matching that color in the shop, you're not chasing after a color that can't be reproduced. If I needed to load another profile, I can tap Profile and select from one of the profiles that I've already loaded. And if I want to add another one, I can press Add down at the bottom and navigate on my phone to where it is I've saved that ICC profile and load it into the Epson Spectrometer app. The last tab over here is a color scheme helper. It just does some analogous triadic, complementary color schemes if you need to quickly work on some ideas for your project. The next section of the Epson Spectrometer app is the comparison section. Here I can compare two colors from multiple sources. I can pull, say, one color directly from a measurement when I'm connected to the SD10 and pull another one from the history of something I've measured previously. So the first thing I'm going to do here is press the plus button under standard, you'll see this menu several places throughout the app when you're hitting a plus button. Do I want to measure a color directly? Do I want to grab it from the history? Or do I want to grab it from a color collection or palette? In this case, I'm going to measure directly. And I'm already connected to my Epson SD10 and it's placed on a blue surface. Tap by measure color. 
And here we go. I've captured that blue. Now I'm going to move my spectrometer over to another blue that I have and press down in the bottom right that measurement circle button. That loaded it into the second space, and now I've got a comparison. I can see that these two blues are not that close with a delta E of 10.21. The great thing here, compared to just comparing two colors with the SD10 standalone, is I can see a little more detailed data about the color comparison. I have L, A, B in the column down at the bottom center there, and I can tell the difference just between the L, the A, and the B to really understand the difference between these two colors. If I scroll down further, I've got a history of comparisons that I've made. I can tap into any of these comparisons and see some of that same detail and when that comparison was made. The exclamation icon you're seeing is when a delta E value is over a threshold that you've set. You can set the delta E threshold in the app settings. I'm going to move over now to the history section. In the history section, I can review all the single measurements that I've made, the single comparisons that I've made, and even the group comparisons that I've made. If I click into one of these measurements, this is similar to the other screen that we saw, and I can review all that data. Here we're moving on to the next section, which is the library section. And up top you see I have color palette and color collection. Color palettes are organized colors that you've made yourself. You can take any of your measured colors or Pantone colors and organize them into a collection. I'm going to tap on this first one here. And here I've got some Pantone chips that I've collected from the Pantone library. I can add more colors to this palette by pressing the plus button. And here I can measure a color directly, pull from a history, or pull from one of the other Pantone collections. I can change my view of the data by pressing this hamburger menu. And now they're in a list rather than in a grid. If I tap the checkbox button, I can select colors and remove them. Or I can select all with the multiple checkbox icon. There's another way you can add colors to a palette, and that's by selecting colors from your history. I'm going to tap history down at the bottom to go to the history section, tap the checkbox, and select several colors from throughout my history. Down at the bottom, you can see there's an add to palette plus icon. If I tap that, here I'm presented with the list of existing palettes, or I can create a new palette. Now it returns to the history list and a new palette has been created in the library. So let's go back to the library. If I back in the library section, I can scroll all the way to the bottom and there's color palette six. Those are the colors I've just added to a new palette. You can even see the date there. So color palette six is perhaps not the best name to keep these colors in context and keep them organized. So I'm going to tap color palette 6 at the top, and here I can change the name to, let's name it Customer ABC Colors. Just like with individual colors, I can add a photo, I can tag location information, and I can see some information about the measurements. Down at the bottom, I also have a notes section just like with individual colors.